Is milk good for you? Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life. And if you like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So milk has long been regarded as some sort of basic food group and we should all have it and so forth. So let's just look at some of the arguments for and against and then I'll kind of wrap it up with my opinion and experience. Milk is produced by mammals and humans are mammals. So from that point of view, it's a very, very natural, very innate food for us. So then again, that would make human milk very innate for us and cow's milk and other species milk may or may not be that suitable. Just because it's from another species doesn't necessarily make it bad. Then we have the issue of weaning, that humans are the only animals who have attempted to go into adulthood and still drink milk. Mammals make milk for their young, so during a growth period it's the most convenient food. So from that perspective, it's a little bit unnatural for us to continue to drink milk, but again, it's not necessarily an argument for why it should be bad or good. Calcium has long been the number one argument. Oh, you're gonna get osteoporosis. Oh, you can't get enough calcium if you don't drink milk. And that argument is actually completely invalid. Calcium is, it is present in milk. It is very, very poorly absorbable from milk. And if you think about it, if milk has all that calcium and cows don't drink milk, then where do they get it? Exactly. So green stuff, vegetables, leafy greens have tons and tons of calcium. And that calcium is actually much more bioavailable than it is in milk. What it really comes down to regarding milk is how natural is the milk? Because if it comes straight from nature, then in my experience, it's a pretty good food. But if we change it, then it's a terrible food. So that brings it down to raw versus pasteurized. And raw milk is alive. It has bacteria in it, the lactobacillus, the beneficial bacteria that help repopulate our gut, that help defend against the pathogenic bacteria. It helps maintain the balance. Uh, it has enzymes that help us break down the, the food, the, the proteins in the milk. Because milk is a relatively hard food to digest if it doesn't have the bacteria and the enzymes in it. If it's alive and still has those, then it's reasonably easy to digest and process, but if they're missing, it makes it very, very difficult to break down and process. So pasteurized milk is sterile. They have killed off all the bacteria, so we don't have any of the supposedly bad, but we also don't have any good bacteria to help us process it. It has no enzymes in it to help us break it down. And it's also homogenized, meaning in normal natural milk, the way nature made it, the fat is sort of in globules. It's like it's floating around and it separates if you leave it sitting for a little bit. So that was nature's way of organizing that particular food for us. And when we homogenize it so the fat doesn't separate, then we change it. And in my experience with muscle testing and clinical results, that is a problem. That the body does much better with the fat when it's floating around the way it does in raw milk, the way that we normally get it from our mothers and from other animals. There are lots and lots of things in the pasteurized milk that can change when we heat it. So proteins, for example, are very heat sensitive. Proteins get denatured. If you think about an egg white, it's liquid at room temperature and then when we hit about 70 degrees Celsius, uh, long before boiling, then that protein turns solid. It has denatured. And a lot of the proteins, even though milk doesn't turn solid, the proteins denature. 
they change. So now they're not the same for our bodies to process. They're much more difficult to break down. The reason people have some issues with milk is lactose intolerant. And not all people lose their ability to break down lactose. A lot of people, especially Scandinavians, tend to retain their lactase production so they can break down lactose, whereas Asians, for example, pretty much across the board, they lose that ability. So maybe some, maybe some cultures are better at processing the milk than others. So these are factors you have to weigh in as well. The people who really, really need to avoid milk is if they have an allergy. And that is to one of the two proteins. There are two proteins called whey and casein. And casein is the protein that makes cheese, that produces that texture of cheese. So when you make cheese, they remove the whey and the casein remains. So some people are allergic to one, some are allergic to the other, and some are allergic to both. So if you're allergic to whey, you may still tolerate cheese, but if you're allergic to both, then you definitely need to avoid uh, all dairy, definitely. Uh, and then there can also be sensitivities that we find out with clinical findings and with muscle testing and with trial and error. And that's, in my opinion, because the milk is pasteurized, that we have changed the availability to the body so it becomes a burden and the body develops a sensitivity. And the reason I believe that is that most people, the majority of people, do well on raw dairy products and the majority of people do very poorly on pasteurized milk products. So what I do is I use raw milk and I use raw cheese. So if that's legal in the area you live, then you could make those part of your food consumption, then I would suggest fermented dairy. So those are things like yogurt and kefir and sour cream, etc. Once you ferment it, you reintroduce a bacterial culture so they re-establish that normal culture, that liveness of the dairy and you build up the enzymes and they start helping you to break down the food again. So is milk good for you? I think, in my opinion and experience, if you use natural dairy products, the way that nature produced them, without pasteurization, then I think most people can benefit from having some amount of dairy. I don't think it's a superfood, I don't think you should base your diet on it, but I think most people do well from some amount of natural dairy. I think Pasteurized dairy is one of the biggest problems that we have because there's so many allergies, there's so many problems. There's rashes and eczemas and headaches and so forth. And not to mention in kids, all of those infections and the runny nose and their immune system challenges, I think, again, in my experience, are primarily caused by pasteurized dairy. So use some natural dairy in moderation if you can find it. Stay away from pasteurized dairy as much as you can. Share this video with as many people as you can and thanks for watching.